Her, uh, she had an album called Tropico, and We Belong was the big hit off that one. 1984 from Tons Pat of Benatar, by the way. Huh? Yeah. Um, it was a big hit. Love is a Battlefield is a big hit, too. Tons of big hits. Yeah. Uh, Devotion to Accuracy, you were absolutely correct about the new Bad Boys film. Uh, I was looking at an old... <laughs> so wait, it was called? <laughs> it's called Bad Boys Ride or Die. You are correct. Yeah. I I was like, I thought the last one was called Bad Boys for Life, and in fact it was. Yeah. I, I don't know how I didn't realize I was looking at something old. But you know who's in the new Bad Boys is that Rhea Seahorn. I still feel like she's not getting her due. She was, what's her name, in uh, Better Call Saul. His girl. She was in Better Call Saul. Oh, okay. And you, she does voices for some cartoons and stuff, but I feel like, I thought after Better Call Saul, she would really be in just a ton of stuff because she's so cute, and I just don't see her in that much stuff. But she's in Bad Boys Ride or Die, if you're a Rhea Seahorn fan. Uh, so we've discussed the guy who was eating a severed leg out in California. And there's a woman who was climbing Mount Everest. Your call a couple of weeks ago, this came up because Poundcake thought that you could climb Mount Everest in an afternoon. In an afternoon. Um, because I guess if it's something that you're not really thinking about or you're not aware of the scale, you don't know how long it would take. Of course, it takes much longer than an afternoon. But there was a woman from Wales who was on her way to base camp, and she got gored by a yak while she was FaceTiming her family. Ooh. <laughs> gored by a yak while you're yakking with your family. Yeah, yakking, yeah. and then the yak comes up mm. and makes you yak. This is a charity hike. A charity hike on Everest. So I guess she wasn't, like, you know, summiting Mount Everest, but she was uh, climbing part of it. And she was talking to her family. She's talking to uh, her her brother and his wife and their son. And she heard, like, hoof noises uh, getting up to her. And before she realized what was going on, uh, she had been gored by this yak. It went through her leg, her whole leg. And then they had to airlift her. You know, you're just trying to have some fun up there on Mount Everest. You're just trying to spend a leisurely afternoon climbing Mount Everest. And there's yaks running around. And so it it got her through the leg, threw her up in the air, and she landed hard back on the the ground. But imagine you're the family. They're like, hey, you're cutting out. She's screaming. (laughs) Hey, are you all right? The phone's just facing the sky. Are you okay? She's screaming. No, I'm not. Hey, you're cutting out. You are on Mount Everest after all. I didn't even realize you could FaceTime people on Mount Everest. I thought you need like a satellite phone or something. Hey, Bill. Hey, Alan. How you doing? Good. What's going on? Hey, I, uh, my wife and I saw Pat and uh, Neil last July. They were fantastic. Oh, good for you. <laughs> So they're coming about they're coming about once a year, right? Yeah, they are. They they put on one hell of a show, man. They are. She hasn't lost it. She's got the vocals still. She is fantastic. And I give her credit too, and and it's probably probably credit to both of them because they've been together for so long that that she didn't do anything to herself. Like she, I don't think she got a facelift or you know. She's a 71-year-old woman who still looks good, I guess, and can sing her ass off and She's yeah, not she she's she's, she's not Madonnaing herself into oblivion. No, she looks amazing. She looks beautiful. She she kills it on stage. She kills it. Now, and Bill, if I were so, to if I were to call Pat Benatar, would she confirm that you were there? <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was way in the back, my friend. All right. Well, uh, she's coming back uh, this year. Thank you. There's Bill in Cleveland. Hell is for children. Hell. 
That's hell. A mess. Hell is for children. <sighs> yeah, so uh, congratulations uh, to that guy. Kevin Hart got the Mark Twain Prize last night for comedy. Uh, I don't know when this airs. There's always a couple of, because people get up there and do long speeches, and then they edit it together, and they usually show this on PBS. I thought the Mark Twain Comedy Prize had been around for a long time. It's only been around since 1998. So he's in a pretty select group of people. Pryor got the first one. Last year was Adam Sandler. John Stewart has won and Steve Martin. I remember watching when Julia Louis-Dreyfus got it. Hell. Letterman. Uh, Carlin won in 08, but he died between the announcement and the ceremony. So it ended up being accidentally a posthumous award. But it sounds like everybody just used it as an opportunity to roast the shrimp out of Kevin Hart. Rather than, you know, because a lot of times these things that people get up and they might tell, uh, they might tell. Well, they probably cut an snarky ad during story. it. Like- <laughs> right. Well, that's what they were. That's kind of what they were talking about is like, this is that kind of double-sided thing with comedians. Like, everybody wants to make everybody laugh, obviously, Mm -hmm. and give that person a hard time. Yeah, I mean, that's how a lot of comics show their camaraderie and adoration for each other. You know, we roast the one we love kind of situation. Uh, But Kevin Hart definitely seems like a guy that got into comedy so he could do commercials. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so they do this in D.C. There's like 2,000 people, and I'm sure there's no way to get a ticket for it unless you're, like, connected. or You know, it's a lot of industry people and stuff, I think. But, you know, only a handful of people have gotten this. And uh, Seinfeld was there, Chappelle and Chris Rock and Tiffany Haddish. And people. Seinfeld was first up, and he's like, uh, do you think I'm doing this because I owe Kevin Hart a favor? Or maybe I like the idea of Kevin Hart owing me a favor. I can't think of... Uh, Seinfeld is the best because he's just so in-your-face insulting. He's like, I Kevin Hart can't do anything for me. I don't want to be in Jumanji. And Jimmy Fallon and J.B. Smoove talked about how Kevin Hart used to rip his jokes off. And then everybody else makes fun of him for not turning anything down. I mean, there was a lot of stuff. Like, when Chappelle got it, there was a lot of ball busting. With Sandler, tons of ball busting. But were they busting his balls over, like, his his movies or, like, goofy Jack and Jill movies? Or I feel like like they're taking the the shots that everybody's going to take at him. Yeah. Like, yeah, from making... Crappy movies and making, you know, like silly movies. Uh, Kevin Hart or Kevin uh, James did the edit where it was everybody cheering for him instead of Adam. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Kevin Hart, uh, this is a guy. And again, he, but he's been very open about it, too. He's like, I will get out of the business when I hit a certain number that I have in my head. And I've always assumed that in his mind, that number is probably a billion dollars. You know, Seinfeld has had to deny that he's a billionaire. There was an article that came out earlier in the week, and they were like, Seinfeld's a billionaire. Now, he said years ago that everybody thinks that he and Larry David have way more money than they do. He's like, Obviously, we have a great life. We've made a good living because they still get residuals on Seinfeld and all those kinds of things. Uh, and but they've he's, been savvy with how they've resold it over the years for streaming services and stuff like that. Yeah. But he's like, this notion that Larry and I are billionaires is ridiculous. But the thing that was written about it is they go, the people writing it, they go, well, we got to this number um, by assuming that he invested his money well a long time ago. It's like, well, then you could apply that to anybody. Yeah. So Trump's oh. okay for inflating his finances <laughs> then? You have yeah. a hard time for that. The syndication deals for Seinfeld have gotten him about $465 million, another $100 million from the Netflix streaming deal. Uh, he's brought in over $100 million in the last few decades from touring. He has $40 million in real estate. 
But he was like, I'm surprised he doesn't have more in real estate just because he has like garages in yeah. New York and real estate's just so absurdly expensive in New York. Yeah. And then all the cars too. So yeah, he says, I'm not a billionaire and I'm, you know, but he's going out again. He's doing that Netflix is a joke fest in, they're doing two nights in California. It's him and Bargazzi and Gaffigan and Sebastian Maniscalco. That'd be a good show. Hmm. But yeah, everybody give a, cause the wall, I was reading a, there was a Wall Street Journal thing on Kevin Hart that says you can't get rid of Kevin Hart because he will do everything. And this guy, you know, Seinfeld was like, most comics can't function outside of comedy. If somebody said the word ideation to me, I would walk out of the room. But Kevin Hart is a guy who talks about like, you know, He's he's concerned with like return on investment and things like that. And he's got all these. His entertainment company is valued at six hundred fifty million dollars, but he has a tequila brand and a restaurant chain and self-help books and superfood supplements at Walmart. And tons of sponsorships. He has a line of high end watches. So, I mean. Would you, if you got to that level, would you want all that stuff? I want to like do all those different things, like write, like writing a self help book. I would not. I would not. I would want, but again, Kevin Hart, because I think the thing with Kevin Hart is I, I always feel like he's making up for lost time because he was a dude by his own admission who kind of took the wrong route early on, right? Like he, he wasn't. He, well, he he no. He focused le- he I, focused I, I, more I, on the he, movies early on when he started yeah. getting movies, and then he was like, "Oh, I'm not that great of a comedian," and then he kind of went back to Philly and started doing clubs and really drilled down on becoming a much better comedian. Well, no, he it kind of blew up for him early, for, right? Well, he he got a lot of roles. He was doing a lot of stand up, and then he got roles in like. Uh, soul plane and things soul like plane that. and things like that and they didn't hit like he thought and he, he thought they were gonna make him a movie star and so then he didn't get any offers after the, those movies because they didn't do well at the box office but there was a following for him because people did actually see soul plane it just got leaked and spread around on bootleg I, DVDs I forgot about that. oh yeah. I didn't know that it, so, it did do that so it, it that so Hollywood thought he was poison but he wasn't, so then he started just hitting the road really hard. Yeah. It's not that he didn't think he was a good comedian. He he just wasn't really selling tickets, but he hit the road real hard and then just built up a mailing list and just built up a following through doing road dates. And then it got, like, Netflix specials and stuff like that. Whatever he Then it blew up. Okay. Yeah, because I just remember uh, uh, listening to an interview with him, and he was like, I just – wasn't where I wanted to be comedically and kind of had to drill down on that. He's 44. He's one of the youngest people to get this Mark Twain prize. He's the 25th. He's 44. Only 44. I mean, I love the guy's hustle. He would not make my top 10 favorite comics, but I mean, the dude. I, I've never really watched any of his stand up. It's Mike, funny. I mean, it's funny. It's because, all right. Like, the, what because I Because he's saw very him live, animated. And, well, I know. saw him live at uh, the cornfield shows with. Uh, Chappelle. Chappelle. And he was funny that night, but, like, of that night, he was probably fifth of the fifth funniest person I saw. Yeah. Was I, saw, I mean, it was, like, him and Bill Burr and Michelle Wolf and Donald Rawlings and Tony Woods and Chappelle. It just It was a crazy lineup that night. But, I mean, good for him. I'm happy yeah, the for dude him. works I th- hard, I don't man. think he's bad. It, he just, no. His stuff never hit me. It's a little too over the top, and I like someone that's a little more pulled back. I like somebody that doesn't beat you over the head with a punchline. Yeah, he's definitely laser-focused on, like, the business end of it, too. Yeah, and I also think that's gross. I like a little more uh, misadventure in my comedians. Someone that just likes business that much is not... (laughs) Oh, you don't like it? No, I don't like it at all. Oh, okay. I think it's real gross. I think it's real, like, oh, you, you, you don't like comedy. You like money. Well, everybody likes money. I mean, I take your right, point. But you could but... just make money off of stand up. But when you want to write self help books and <laughs> uh, have restaurants and stuff like that, it's just like, okay, who cares? It's also got to be hard to turn things down. And a lot of people aren't Not very you, good at. I, listen, if you are making. 
all I want to do is turn things down. All I want to do, if, if you know, I was making the money that he makes touring. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. The things I would turn down. The, the things I'd say no to. Last year, he brought in $67.5 million from 82 shows. Yeah, he was that the would top, be, that top would be grossing enough, comedy act. That would be enough for me. Yeah. I would, I, if I was uh, making $67 million just from touring, I wouldn't be like, hey, MGM Sportsbook, let's get together and do these <laughs> things together. Or whatever, whoever he works yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all those. He's, yeah. Need, yep. I would say somebody else needs it more than me. Pass it on to them. Right. Well, anyway, I don't know when that will air, but those are always very entertaining when they do those Mark Twain awards because they do. They bust balls and they, you know, um, they get a, like a really good lineup of people to go up there. And mm-hmm. and usually and, you'll hear about the ball busting, but then when you watch the actual thing, it's 10% that and then a lot of adulation and stuff yes. like that. Yes, yep. Oh, I'm sorry. It'll be on Netflix May 11th. I missed that. I'm going to break. You want to send a text, 35192 to give me there. I will have those Queensryche and Armored Saint tickets for you. Anybody hit me up for those. 